Here to discuss what's ahead for retailers and how to invest in the sector is Bank of America retail analyst Lorraine Hutchinson. Hi, Lorraine. Nice to see you. Hi, thanks for having me. Can you give us a little more insight into what the credit card uh, analytics tell you about how customers are spending? Sure. So our BAC credit and debit card spending indicated a slowdown in September. And, and we think this is a result of the consumers just having a little more pressure on their wallets. Um, when you think back to last year heading into holidays, people hadn't really spent as much on vacations, on going out to restaurants, on travel. And this year, they've reprioritized a lot of their spending toward those other parts of discretionary. At the same time, you're seeing fuel prices rise, food prices rise. So there's really a pinch on the discretionary goods side of the equation. And as a result, we're forecasting a more muted holiday outlook for the retailers that we cover this year. We've talked an awful lot about how retailers trying to get, get ahead of the kind of supply chain crunch that they saw last holiday season may have pre-ordered this year and are sitting on lots and lots of inventory. So what are we going to see from the retailers moving toward Christmas? Look, inventories, retail inventories are at record high, all-time high levels. Um, and that's because of what you just said, Contessa. They ordered early. They also ordered too much in many cases because they were basing it on a snapback in demand in the first half. We've since seen that demand slow. So this leaves retailers with a lot of product. The good news is the supply chain is working, so they'll have product this holiday season, where last year we saw lots of stockouts. The bad news is it all came in, it all came in early, and it's too much. Do you have so any what we would expect Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. I thought you were Go ahead, we would ex we'd expect Yeah, we'd expect the promotional cadence to really pick up leading into Thanksgiving and through the holiday season, and then for the clearance levels to be high in January as they try to get clean for spring. So as you talk generally about inventory, what did they order too much of, and who ordered, who is in the, in the worst inventory position among the universe of companies that you follow? In other words, was it clothing? Was it appliances? Was it uh, um, small uh, household goods, whatever? And, and who's, who's out over their skis on, on inventory? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of the pandemic winning categories. So cozy, athletic, um, stay at home type of things, outdoor furniture, you know, things that were working and everyone expected them to continue to work. Mm -hmm. Now people are looking to go out to spend more on parties and um, different types of clothes to go back to work and things like that. So mm. I, I think it's, it's really that stay at home category that we're seeing an overabundance of. Uh, we've heard it from some of the athletic retailers like Nike. Uh, we've heard it from some of the retailers catering a slightly lower income demographic like um, Gap's Old Navy and Kohl's. So they are in pretty dire positioning. On the flip side of that, though, who cleans up the problems? It's the off-price retailers. They yeah. buy a lot of that inventory at rock-bottom prices. So it's Marshalls, it's TJX, it. it's, uh, it's uh, uh, Home yeah. Goods, it's yeah. whatever. Oh, my, my wife yep. is going to be so Ross, happy Burlington. at Home Goods. Oh, my goodness, you have no idea. Uh, it makes me miserable to go it there, is, but, uh, but that's okay. But when you walk in, you see brands you haven't seen in years. Mm -hmm. um, the, mm -hmm. the quality of the brands is very high because they're there mm -hmm. to clean up everybody's mistakes. And I think that's a really interesting trend that we'll see over the next several quarters is the quality and quantity of inventory available for the off-pricers to buy is, is really high. Do you have any picks of uh, retailers who have sustainable pricing power that are not going to have to engage in those markdowns or promotions? Yeah, our top holiday pick is Tapestry, which owns Coach, Kate Spade, Stuart Weitzman. We think they have pricing power uh, for a few reasons. Uh, the first is they cut back on about 40% of their SKUs during the pandemic. They really transformed their business by reducing costs and reinvesting in marketing. And they launched a new e-commerce business for their factory channel. So we think these factors add to a real sustainability to earnings post-COVID versus everything else we see out there. Um, the stock trades at only five times EBITDA, and we think that they will buy back 7% of the stock and give you a 3% dividend every year. Pretty compelling returns. All right, off 63.63% uh, today, or a little more than half a percent. Lorraine Hutchinson, thank you so much for joining us today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.